guys, it's Lady Callista. Today we're going to be talking about Pokemon Quest. Um, I'm super excited to do this one. I don't know about you guys, but I know Pokemon, like, back in the day, I want to be the very best that no one ever was. To catch them is the real test to train the Miss White Claws. I don't know the words exactly, but I used to sing them and I used to know all the names of all the Pokemon. I used to love Pikachu. Um, and a couple of years ago, it was actually Pikachu for Halloween, <laughs> which is kind of funny. So this game came out, like, I'm sure most of you guys have heard about Pokemon Go. That's been, like, everywhere. Everybody's, like, played it at some point or another. This game was a little bit different, and this game is available on iOS. It's available on um, the Google Play Store, and it's also available on the Nintendo Switch. I've played it on the Switch, and I've played it um, on my phone, and both are... The same experience, super cool, very well done. Um, you can see here I am naming myself. <laughs> so they ask you to name yourself. And the premise of the game is very quest based, which I thought as I was playing it, I was like, hmm, I feel like my subs would kind of like this, especially if it has this kind of throwback feel where for some of you guys that um, used to love Pokemon, this is actually, it was kind of fun. It's kind of fun. I'm still playing it. Um, and I have a lot of games that I'm playing, so the fact that I'm making time for this is like a big deal. But it's really cute. Of course, the cuteness factor kills me. In the beginning, you can select your starting Pokemon, so you guys are not going to be surprised to know that, of course, the very first Pokemon that I'm going to befriend is going to be Pikachu. He's my true love. Um, so of course I'm going to pick him. So he's basically the, you can pick him, you can pick Squirtle, like you can, you go through the gamut, um, in terms of who you can pick, they give you like five options, and you begin, and there's two components to this game, like two key areas, there's, think of this, there's like a map section where you do expeditions, and that's kind of what you're seeing here, you're kind of running through, um, you're fighting other Pokemon, so cute. Um, each of you guys have an HP bar, um, and then as you clear each wave, you get rewards. And those rewards are going to be in the form of a couple of things. Um, some of the things that you can get as rewards are ingredients. So I'll talk about the ingredient piece a little bit later. Or you can get stones. And these stones, this is cool for those of you guys, a lot of you guys play Lords Mobile that watch my channel. Think of stones as jewels. Yes, when I was doing when I was doing the whole thing with the stones, I'm like, oh my god, this is like training for the more complex jewels that you have when you play some of the more complex games, right? Because the way that they did this, they did a really good job with this, guys, because it can be as complex or as simplistic as you like, right? So this appeals to kids, like young kids as well, as some of us adults who are into the whole retro throwback feel, right? Because you can even tell the format of the game is super old school, right? Like it's very kind of pixelated and everything is like blocky. Um, even the music, I'll try to turn it up at some point so you guys can hear it. It feels very like, I don't even know, like super old school retro, like Game Boy-esque type music that you would hear on those games, right? So it's very, it definitely gives you that nostalgia, but a lot of kids are playing it. So stones and like buffs and stuff can feel really complicated for younger children. So they made it very, very easy for them, which I think is so good on Nintendo's part, like very, very smart, right? Like there's ways that you can auto fight or auto uh, populate the stone section. Like imagine if you could auto populate the jewel section to be the most efficient. Like I think a lot of you guys would love that, right? So they do give that option here, which I think is really good. Um, they also um, give you the option to play with it yourself. So you can see here, this is basically where you start to equip your stones. As you progress in the game, more and more of those slots are going to unlock. So you have the opportunity to equip more and more stones per Pokemon. Also, some Pokemon, if they're starting at a higher level, those guys, are, you're going to have just additional slots to start off with, right? Like they might have three or four open slots if I were to catch like a level 12 right now. Now, Question number one, how do you catch Pokemon? So the way that you catch Pokemon in this game is by cooking. Like, how cute is that? So there, there is a base. This is kind of your base. And on your base, you can decorate it. And each of the decorations that you can put in actually have different buffs in them, which I thought was really cool. And you're able to get decorations progressing through the game as well as buying them. And you can buy them using your tickets. And you're able to get tickets by fulfilling quests and challenges. So the game is very much 
formatted i think in a way where if you're into mobile gaming and you've played a lot of different mobile games like this is not going to feel unfamiliar right you're going to have quests quests will give you rewards you're going to have stones and you have like your major characters in this case pokemon that you're going to equip those stones with and depending on how you equip them you're going to impact their attack or their hp now in this game as i mentioned because it does also um kind of appeal a lot to, to younger kids they did make it very easy so for kids like you're not going to have a ton of different stats that you can mess with like the stats are primarily going to be your health and your attack and your stones are either red and blue and depending on the pokemon you might have a pokemon that can take on additional health stats or a pokemon that can take on additional attack stats right depending on the type of stone that they can um, take on now some pokemon some of the more special ones it interchanges like it intermixes you can decide if you want to put health or attack depending um another thing to mention is as the game progresses right now you're only seeing me kind of fighting with my pikachu but as the game progresses you do have the opportunity to fight in a team of three that's where i'm up to i don't know if you can fight with more pokemon i doubt it um as the game progresses here's meowth that cat dang it i used to hate him in the cartoon <laughs> um his voice drove me nuts but you can also see another thing i want to mention for you guys is when you're on expedition mode you're going through the expeditions to do a couple of things to progress in the game level up get more experience get more ingredients um and you're able to go through the expedition in auto mode if you want so you can auto fight through some of these i will say i have tried auto mode a lot especially for like the smaller battles when you're just progressing through the game what i have noticed as the game progresses however is um it would lose for the final boss and then i would take control right and you like you know we're paying attention maybe a bit more and we're trying to be a little bit more strategic and i would be able to beat the boss when i would take control so keep that in mind you guys like auto isn't always going to be the win like it's good to take control i use auto if i'm like multitasking or i'm like oh i just want to get through this level or whatever um this is the part that is the base camp so this is the cooking so all the ingredients that you are able to obtain doing expeditions are going to be here um the game again as i mentioned it will walk you through everything and you're able to either auto select um the types of ingredients that you throw into your pot or you can pull them in yourself on the top it says number one question mark there's a bunch of different recipes that you can unlock that will give you hints in terms of if you take a lot of soft blue squishy items and throw them in the pot you're probably going to get some water pokemon right and if you want some water pokemon that's what you're going to do so think about that um i thought that was cool as the game progresses um you're able to switch out your pot into higher level pots that have an, a capacity of more ingredients so for example you're able to switch to a bronze pot that is going to allow you to cook with 10 ingredients and that's going to actually attract pokemon that are higher level so that's the whole thing with this and you're able to speed up your cooking one of two ways by either doing expeditions or you can use your tickets for the sake of the video i use my tickets you can see there's a new dish it's a mulligan stew a la carte i think and then you see here this is like the exciting part where you get pokemon visiting you and you're like oh my god what could it be um this is part of the tutorial still so it'll basically let you know like you have i hate the rat and you know why i don't like rattata because i feel like i would get them all the time in pokemon go and it drove me nuts and i live in new york city and new york city is known for like rats no joke so it wasn't surprising but i was like this is not fair i just keep getting rats everywhere i go it was like so annoying um but this is kind of your starting crew you're gonna have the, po the pokemon that you chose in the beginning you're gonna have rattata and you're gonna have a pidgey i think um so you're gonna have that as your starting click um so the goal here is start cooking as soon as possible because these guys you're not going to get far with them you're going to be getting rid of them soon so you want to make sure you're cooking as soon as possible so you can attract higher level pokemon now here you guys can see i've tried to um I kept playing and I didn't keep recording, right? So you guys could see some progression without having to watch me play like minutes and minutes and minutes because I know this video is getting a little bit long, but it's a really fun game. And you can see like you start to collect um, different Pokemon. So I got, I have a Porygon. He's a normal type Pokemon, level 25. Um, I have, uh, who else do I have in there that's worth mentioning? I'm like, hmm. I've gotten some interesting ones. I got like um, the Executor. 
I have, uh, and you can see there, like Onyx, I was fighting with Onyx for a really long time because he was my highest level Pokemon. Execute, my bad. Um, and he's a level 27. So something that I was wondering was like, okay, so I have a level 27 and I have a level 23. That's pretty good, right? So the game does have the opportunity to, and here you can see kind of like my... Uh, my fighting squad so to speak right and this is a little bit farther in the game so you guys can see how many different stones I have and consistently right here what I was doing is I was I had the level 23 execute I swapped him for the level 27 execute that just decided to visit my camp um, but I was I had to make sure I was moving the power charms the stones out of my old execute into my new execute now it's never a good look to have two of the same Pokemon you guys I'm not a fan of that um, I know some of you are going to totally be against getting rid of a Pokemon, even if he's super low level, like the Sandshrew that I have there is like a level, what is that, like a level one? But I feel bad getting rid of him because I'm like, oh, but then I won't have a Sandshrew. Like I totally got rid of the Rattata though. I was like, Psh, see ya. Don't wanna, <laughs> don't wanna have you in my click. Um, but you can see here, this is something that you should be doing after each expedition because each expedition is going to give you additional stones. You want to make sure you're swapping stones all the time. Um, so that you're always using your best stones, right? So there is an auto set opportunity here. You click auto set. Again, I think this game did a great job because I've never used auto set for this. I actually enjoy sw switching these things around. Um, but I feel like for kids, it totally makes this game so much more approachable and less scary because just the format of this, I feel like if, if it's a young kid, like a, I don't know, like an eight, 10 year old, it could feel like a lot. Um, but the auto set and the auto fight, it totally takes some of the guesswork out of it, right? Because they may not know to start toggling against like all their characters and figure out, well, Pikachu's in the front. He really is kind of tanking, so he should have more health. That's all stuff that you get just from playing games for a really long time, right? The way that we think. Um, for kids, it might be a little bit harder. It's a good opportunity for you guys to, you know, if you have children or nieces, nephews, little cousins, whatever, you can kind of talk them through this. I think it, it teaches really awesome basic game mechanics because you can see here, it, the way that the teams are run is you have one guy in the front and two guys in the back. The way that my team is set up anyway because I, um, Pikachu is kind of like my um, melee hitter. Um, but that means that he's going to be taking a lot of the damage. Um, another thing in terms of the cooking, I did mention this. I wanted to show you guys the bronze cup. Like you can see this actually can hold 10 ingredients. I don't have enough ingredients which basically means I need to do a lot more expeditions so that I have the 10 ingredients to be able to start cooking. The reason that you want to cook with 10 instead of 3 and I'm, I'm sure as the game progresses it'll be like 20 or maybe even more um, is because you are able to attract higher level Pokemon which is a good thing because that helps you get through the expeditions even faster right like you don't end up failing a lot of them so here I'm just getting out because I didn't have enough ingredients but you can see I have quite a few Pokemon there um, I have a couple of statues in my base each of those statues provides a buff you get those um, statues through doing different expeditions um, another thing to mention for you guys you can see let's see the quests. so as I mentioned this does teach you um, kind of like your basic game mechanics so there are quests that you're working through um, there's main quests and then there's some of the challenge quests quests will give you tickets that you see on the upper right hand screen or they are going to give you ingredients again that you can use for cooking that you can then use to get better Pokemon that you can then use to past the expeditions like you see where I'm going um, the next thing I wanted to talk to you guys about is training there is training in the game uh, basically in the very top you would um, select who you want to train you guys know I already mentioned it's all about Pikachu in this channel so Pikachu is the one that we're going to train and then in the bottom you see where it says supporting Pokemon though that's where you're gonna put the Pokemon that are going to basically help Pikachu train now the Pokemon that you put in there will be lost they do warn you about this you guys but I want to make sure you guys are aware that's where my Rattata went right he goes he smashes him out and then you basically lose that Pokemon right but you do get that some EXP some experience um, for training but you want to make sure that if you only have one of a certain type of Pokemon that you're not going to get rid of him like my Psyduck I think he's kind of funny so I'm, I'm keeping him he wouldn't even provide that much from an experience perspective anyway right because he's only a level five um, but you want to be mindful of that. Again, as I mentioned, you have kind of this map view. I've beat the first, second, and third 
world, so to speak. Now I have the fourth, fifth, and sixth world. The interesting thing that they do in this game is they open up multiple worlds at once, and it almost feels like you have to do three, four, five, uh, four, five, six, round one, four, five, six, round two, four, five, six, round three. That's kind of how the numbers progress and the numbers are basically the strength. So want to be mindful of that. Um, you can see here, um, as as I mentioned in the beginning of the game, we only had Pikachu kind of fighting. Now we have all three. Um, I have it on auto right now. When I do those kind of boss battles, I am able to put it on um, kind of not auto, like manual control where I can decide when I want to fight with whom. Um, something that is important to mention is when you're fighting the big bosses, sometimes one of your Pokemon will die. They're not dead forever. So that's important to mention. When a Pokemon dies um, in battle against a boss is they actually become a square-shaped Pokeball, which I thought was really funny. Um, and then that square-shaped Pokeball is basically acts as a timer as to how long it's going to be before they can respawn. So Pikachu, for example, who right now is my frontline, oftentimes will be one of the first to die, but he will respawn, assuming my other two Pokemon can like hold out. So when I'm playing manually, I usually have to make sure that I can make at least one guy last so my other guys can respawn. So that is important to mention. Another thing to mention, and you can kind of see it here, is this Arcanine does have his little buddies. I don't know if it's his little puppies, um, but it's it's kind of like world of warcraft right you know when you beat those big bosses and they always have those additional enemies those spawns and you have to clear those those enemies before you can progress same deal here and you're gonna see here um two of my buddies have become pokeballs third one just became a pokeball i lost i had it going on auto when i did this a second time i did it on manual and i ended up winning because i got rid of the spawns first so that's really important now overall do i like the game do i not like the game absolutely i love the game i think for adults for those of us that are that were really into pokemon you know a long time ago that we were kind of living the pokemon go life you know again and this is like a cool game this there's a lot going on um it's easy it's simple it is not multiplayer at least not now um and it's just one of those things that you can just kind of play to to relax i think for kids it's amazing because it is actually going to show you a lot of really important basic game mechanics so it's going to show you um, to make sure that you're following your quest lines and checking your quests, that you constantly have things going on, that you're cooking while you're doing your expeditions, the most if when it really as it relates to stones, right? Do you have the highest level equipped or not? So I actually think it's a great game. I had a ton of uh, fun playing it. I probably will continue to play it leisurely here and there. Um, it's just like a good game when I'm like stressed out, you know, from work on my way home. Like it, it just became like a really fun thing to do. Um, and I think for those of you that have children or little nieces and nephews, little cousins, this is a really good opportunity for you to play a game with them that they're going to enjoy that you can actually teach them like game mechanics that they'll probably use in the future. Um, lastly, the game is free, so you can't go wrong. This game, as I mentioned before, is available on the Nintendo Switch, um, on the Google Play Store, as well as the iOS Store. So super easy, like literally nothing stopping you. I haven't spent a dime on this game. I don't plan to. Um, very user friendly um, and runs really well. So if you have any questions, comment.